What is going on, y'all? It is the Caveman back at it again with another video. Week number nine, folks. You guys know how the drill works around here. If you're new, uh, it's just pretty damn simple, pretty straightforward. I'm going to go through all of the week nine games, tell you who I think is going to win. Um, and I've been doing pretty well this year, although last week was well, not one of my best weeks. Before we get into week nine, you guys know how I roll around here. Mozza applesauce, if you're ever hungry, thirsty, whatever it might be. Mozza applesauce will satisfy whatever satisfy you. To satisfy you, the Caveman guarantee. I promise. It will never fail you. Be sure you're using my code on Underdog Fantasy if you're 18 or older. Use my code The Caveman for an extra $10. Let's hop into the picks. As far as last week goes, as someone alluded to it at the beginning of the video, it certainly was not my best week. It was actually my worst week since week one. I went nine and six in my picks, moving my overall record to 86 and 36. Nine and six doesn't sound all that bad, but when you're averaging 11 wins per week, it's certainly not the best. But some bullshit went down last week. I really can't blame myself too much. The Jets beating the Bengals. The Saints beating the Bucks, and I guess the Patriots beating the Chargers wasn't the biggest surprise in the world, but still, I mean, so much shit went down that I just could never have expected, so I'm not gonna, you know, really shame myself too much here. But we're gonna turn shit around here in Week 9, starting tonight with Thursday Night Football. The Indianapolis Colts host the New York Jets, who are coming off of that humongous upset win. Um, I, I want to say that the Colts are gonna kill them, and I know they are gonna kill them, but for some reason, that, that little voice in the back of my mind saying, Mike White, Mike White. Like what? I just, I just can't get it out. It does worry me. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm going with the Colts, obviously, 100,000% here, especially considering the fact that they really should have beaten the Titans last week. Mike White is just haunting me. The first game on Sunday's 1 o'clock slate, it's a very, very intriguing one. It's going to be a shit bad game, but it's going to be an intriguing one at that. As the Miami Dolphins host the Houston Texans. Not too sure if Tyrod's going to play this week. He was activated off of IR last week. Didn't play. Has the chance to play this week. Will he play? That's up in the air. But either way... I think I'm going to still take the Dolphins here. The Dolphins have just about hit rock bottom, but I still think there's a couple inches right below them that they just haven't quite reached yet. Um, I don't know. Like, I hate to admit it, but I do kind of feel bad for Tua with all the Deshaun Watson trade rumors, you know, surrounding him. And he honestly really hasn't been playing all that bad, especially as of late. So I don't think they're going to drop this game or else, you know, that would really be the, the low of the low for the Dolphins. So I'm going to give them here, uh, give them the win in this one here. This next game is just a heaping pile of hippo puke. I mean, this is just, it's going to be a murder. The Dallas Cowboys host the Denver Broncos. Uh, they The Dallas Cowboys held Dak Prescott out of last week's game so he could be healthy going forward. Even if he doesn't play, for some reason, Cooper Rush isn't that bad to the point where they're going to, you know, go out and lose the next four. Uh, and he showed that last week as they beat the Minnesota Vikings uh, with Cooper Rush on primetime. I cannot believe that happened. But yeah, Cooper Rush proved that he could do it. And if he could do it against the Vikings, he can certainly do it against the Broncos. Denver stands no chance here. Uh, we're going with the Cowboys. Speaking of the Minnesota Vikings, they traveled to Baltimore to take on the Ravens who are coming fresh off a bye. I don't think the Ravens are ever going to let what happened to them against the Chargers happen again. Um, and I also don't think the Minnesota Vikings are good. I, I don't know if it's Kirk Cousins and his lack of leadership. I don't know if it's Mike Zimmer and his system. I don't really know. I mean, they have a team on paper that should be above 500. They should be a good playoff team. And it's not really looking like that at the moment because for some reason they can't figure their shit out over there. I don't think they're going to figure it out against the Ravens. So I'm going with Baltimore here. I mean, I don't think Lamar Jackson is going to come into this game and lose to a struggling team like the Minnesota Vikings. Now, this next game that we have on the Sunday slate is super pivotal for the AFC North as the Cleveland Browns are being hosted by the Cincinnati Bengals. Both of these teams are coming out of upset losses in Week 8. This game is humongous for their division. I really want to sit here and tell you that I think the Bengals are going to bounce back from that loss against the Jets but I just don't think that's going to be the case because I don't think the Browns are going to drop the next two because that would put them below 500 at the bottom of their division because the Pittsburgh Steelers beat them last week and they're four and three right now and the Browns are four and four. This game is huge. I don't think the Browns are going to let themselves fall this far and, and the Cincinnati Bengals, let's be real here, they're still a very young team. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to run into some obstacles and I think this week and last week for that matter uh, are going to be such obstacles that I'm talking about. I mean, just like the way the Los Angeles Chargers were desperate everybody to start with 
they began to get humbled. I think the same exact thing is going to happen with the Bengals, and it's going to be starting with the Jets and going into Week 9 against the Browns. So I'm taking the Browns here. I know it might be bold, but that's what I'm going to do. Only two more 1 o'clock games remaining. This one, we got the New Orleans Saints hosting the Atlanta Falcons. Another interdivisional matchup. Now, I was kind of on the Atlanta Falcons hype train previous to last week. I thought they were going to make a little bit of a run going into the midway point of the season. They lost to the Panthers last week, and my theory was completely shocked. I was genuinely shocked that the Falcons lost to the Panthers last week. I thought the Falcons were going on an uphill trend, right? and then they lost Calvin Ridley, and they just completely stuttered on offense against the Carolina Panthers, and I think the Falcons Falcons are going to be that piss poor team that we all thought they were going to be to start the season and that's why I'm going to go with the Saints here they have a quarterback situation that's up in the air because Jameis Winston tore his ACL he will be out for the year Taysom Hill is not particularly healthy yet but I'm not sure if they're going to roll with him or Trevor Simeon that'll be an interesting game but the fact that Trevor Simeon stepped in and beat the Buccaneers that's quite the storyline. So I think the Saints are going to be just fine no matter who's starting at quarterback, especially against the Falcons. In the last one o'clock game, we got the New York Giants who just barely lost to the Kansas City Chiefs back on Monday night, going up against the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, The Raiders had that horrible incident with one of their receivers. We're not going to get into that right now, but a very, very tragic incident. Um, I, I think they have been a little bit better of a team ever since John Gruden got fired. That franchise has been going through so much shit this year, but uh, they've been fighting through it. They've been facing the adversity and they've been beating it up. So I think they're going to continue that and they're going to go in and take down the Giants on the road. Now to kick off the 4 p.m. slate, I am terrified to continuously take this team to win, but I feel like I have no choice. I mean, the Los Angeles Chargers have dropped two games now that I thought for sure they were going to win. The first one being against the Baltimore Ravens where they got murdered and then the loss of the Patriots this past week. I mean, I am completely terrified of the Chargers, but they're going against the Eagles, right? I mean, this should be this should be a lot. The thing is, it's not a lot. The Philadelphia Eagles, who I understand faced the Lions, but they did beat them into a pulp. Like, the, the freaking Philadelphia Eagles literally dismantled the poor Detroit Lions. And not a lot of teams have done that this year. The Lions have stuck around in games. They haven't been the worst 0-8 team that we've ever seen. So, you know, that really, really worries me for, for picking Los Angeles Chargers. But I'm going to do it anyway and just pray to God they don't screw it up. In the second and final afternoon game that we got starting at 425, we have the Kansas City Chiefs and the Green Bay Packers going at it. Now, we all know what happened with Aaron Rodgers yesterday. A lot of shit went down. Apparently, he's not vaccinated, even though he kind of led everybody on that he was. Understandably, I guess he did some, you know, at-home treatment with his personal doctor. I guess he thought that would work. Um, well, it didn't. It did not pass the NFL's regulation, so he's out. Jordan Love is starting. Um, that worries me to pick the Packers, and that's why I'm going to take the Chiefs, even though they just barely beat the Giants. So I'm going with the Chiefs here. I think this is their opportunity to go on a little bit of a run here to really make that last final playoff push. They made a couple trades here at the deadline that I think are going to help them. So yeah, I'm going with the Kansas City Chiefs to help their playoff push. I just mistakenly lied to you. Apparently the Packers Chiefs game is not the last afternoon game. The last afternoon game is actually the Cardinals going to uh, San Francisco to take on the 49ers in a big interdivisional matchup. Uh, that's my mistake. We all saw what happened last week that the Cardinals, right? They lost to Aaron Rodgers when he had no receivers and AJ Green decided not to turn around on the most important play of the game and it got intercepted. What a heartbreaking way to lose. But nevertheless, I'm taking the Cardinals here. I think they're just the better team overall. The 49ers have looked okay, but not great. I mean, they haven't looked horrible either. They're just mediocre, to be honest. I don't think the Cardinals are going to drop back-to-back -back games. They've been playing way too well. I think that J.J. Watt injury actually affected their defense a lot more than people want to admit, including myself. DeAndre Hopkins isn't healthy. It is a sketchy game. I can smell some upset lingering in the air, but I'm going to take the Cardinals with very little certainty. Now, how about this Sunday night game? Now we got the Los Angeles Rams who just acquired Von Miller facing off against the Tennessee Titans who just lost Derrick Henry for pretty much the entire season. What a blow that was for Tennessee. I mean, he was, he was in my opinion, the MVP of the NFL. He was holding the Titans afloat. Um, this would have been a much better game if he was healthy, but as we know, he's not. So I'm taking the Rams here without question. I kind of feel, I, I feel horrible for Derrick Henry. I don't really feel bad for the Titans, but I feel bad for Derrick Henry because he was on quite the tear. But the Rams got better at this deadline. I'm not too sure if Von Miller is going to play in this game, but it doesn't matter. They're going to win. Matt Stafford's going to torch this defense. Uh, 
I think the Titans are going to be demoralized without Derrick Henry. Um, this, this is a no-brainer, in my opinion, on Sunday Night Football. And last, but most certainly not least, because I think it's going to be a good Monday Night game, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers hosting the Chicago Bears. I cannot believe the Steelers beat the Browns last week. That only made the AFC North that much more complicated. Who knows who's going to finish at the top of that division at the end of the year. The Bears showed some life, or should I say Justin Fields showed some life last week against the 49ers on that fourth and one scramble when he dodged like three guys on the right side of the field, and then he completely flipped the field and went to the other side and ran into the end zone. That was a crazy freaking play. Good for Justin Fields to gain some confidence. I don't think it's going to be enough against this Pittsburgh Steelers pass rush. Um, they just traded Melvin Ingram, but it didn't seem like he was making much of an impact as of late. Anyway, um, I'm going with the Steelers here, but I, I could see this being a pretty damn good game. So yeah, those are my picks for week nine. I can't believe we're at the halfway point of the season already. I mean, this shit flies by and it's because we love it so much. So let's enjoy it while it's here. So like I said, I went nine and six last week. I have an 86 and 36 overall record looking to improve on that here in week nine. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I almost knocked my mic over. As always, if you enjoy, please like, subscribe, build the fun stuff. If you want it about to be known fun when I upload, I'd appreciate that. If you want to go over to Twitter, follow me over there. I'd appreciate that as well. I'm a part of the Built to Buffalo content creation team. If you enjoy Buffalo sports content, be sure to follow and subscribe to us on any social media you might have. And I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.